Hey, blessed be, guys. Um, today is Black Magic Talk episode four, and we have a special guest with us, Sonia Smith. Uh, Sonia is a uh, author, and you're also a uh, a witch as well. Yes, Sonia. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, and she's in England right now. I'm so excited to have you on because. Um, like I said in the opening, you know, I'm very interested in ghost hunting in uh, England, although right now with the plane situation, I don't think I'm going to be going anywhere anytime soon. Um, but uh, introduce yourself. Of course, I also have my uh, co-host down here. That is Matt Collins. Um, and uh, so introduce yourself, Sonia. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you came to your path. And then uh, we'll go back to ghost stories that uh, she had a very interesting one. <laughs> okay, well, um, basically, I suppose that I am a bit of a cross between a ceremonial magician and a witch. Um, but it's a traditional witchcraft that I follow. Um, how it differs from Wicca is basically that um, traditional witches don't really call their craft a religion. Um, I was in an Alexandrian coven um, years back, um, uh, working with uh, Maxine and Alex's um, uh, way of uh, doing witchcraft. And uh, of course, Alex was very much a ceremonial magician, in fact. Um, as well as a witch so um i did start off with a with wicca in a way um but but alex's wicca was a kind of different wicca than say gardenarian in the sense that he was very into um ceremonial magic and uh some of the golden dawn stuff and the egyptian um stuff as well so um that was sort of the basis of uh, witchcraft for me to start with. That was the roots of it. Um, and then I went on to become a traditional witch, which is um, very closely associated with uh, the Norse in a way. Um, so uh, we can bring Matt in on that as well at some point. But um, I, I think that um, some of that was taken to the USA by um, Raymond Buckland. And uh, he did a very interesting book, actually. Um, I think it was called Tree, a complete book of um, Anglo-Saxon witchcraft. So that's something that you might like to have a look at, Matt, because it does connect it with the connect witchcraft with the with the Norse and also uh witchdom of the true in a way with the Edward Thorson's uh work. So um so basically that's that's what I do, that's the path that I follow. Um and of course, you know, um I have worked with many different um people um who practice different kinds of magic from chaos magic to um ceremonial to witchcraft to wicca um i think i've probably worked with most of it at some point in my life so that's me <laughs> do you find um that you have a um preferred a uh, way of doing magic like the chaotic or do you uh, are you more you know ritual or traditional based is there any kind of like um preferred magic you like to do or is it just all great and you want to do it um it it depends on uh what work i'm doing um the choice that I make of how I go about it. But if you want to know where I connect the most, it would be in the traditional witchcraft sense. Um, so um, it doesn't differ an awful lot from how uh, Wiccans do their um, ceremonial magic. But um, it's very in tune with like the, the closeness of the land. And uh, I also work with... Um, with fairy with the fae oh i love the fae i just 
I was just calling them in for like a protection spell the other day. Um, <clears throat> um, now, uh, do you call to a certain god or goddess or both? Or is it just kind of you just bring in the feminine and masculine energies? Um, yes. I mean, I, I do have connections with different deities. But um, I find that um, when I'm doing my traditional witchcraft work that I work mainly with, um, you know, the king and queen of the fairies or the... Um, lord and lady as they're called and um they really you know people are a little bit confused sometimes about what they are um and they they certainly are not fluffy little things with wings they're very powerful um beings for want of a better word it's it's hard to describe exactly what they are uh, I suppose the Tuatha de Dananan are, are probably the closest um, from Ireland that you're going to get to describe what they are. But they're very powerful deities and um, spirits of the land. Mm -hmm. So you've got different types of uh, fae in a way because there are those which are powerful spirits and then there are the nature spirits, um, which are, um, you know, things like the spirits in trees, um, stones and such like. And of course, I live here in Avebury, which is um, a very ancient Neolithic stone circle. It was built mm. before Stonehenge. Nice. And so um, when you do magic, in this circle, I mean, where I live, my actual house is, is within the avenue of the, the stones. Uh, it's a huge complex. It covers miles, in fact. Um, and the, the, the stones are still standing, despite the church trying to destroy them. Oh, my um, gosh. In the 1800s, they, they tried to destroy them, but they they couldn't. Um, they didn't manage it. And then... Um, uh, Keeler, uh, who took over the manor here at Avebury Manor, um, he was uh, an archaeologist and he um, resurrected a lot of the stones that had been um, pushed over and they tried to, they put fire underneath of them, trying to destroy them, but they still couldn't do it. I mean, they're huge. They are huge stones. There is as, there as much under the ground of these stones as there is above and we're talking that that they're you know about 20 feet high or so um and so they're there you know there's 40 feet of stone and there are many 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 of them so um you know there are many uh <laughs> uh myths about how how they got here um but uh it is an amazing place and of course it's um it's a huge temple basically hmm. so um when you do um rites within the circle um it's like an amplifier hmm. so um, for like spiritual energy or the even if you would do um yeah i guess you could take your your rituals and your magic your candles and your uh, herbs and stuff and I guess you could amplify that that magical power if you took it to the stones and and did your work there well yes I mean the thing is is that they they like I say the avenue of stones actually um went straight past where I actually this house is built so even the magic I do in my own house is amplified and um the stone the, the kind of like center of the circle is just a walk away for me. So yes, I I do take part of an area um, and do rites there. Yes, but I do rites also here, and um, I have a ritual tr uh, chamber in the garden um, where I do a lot of my work. Um, do you like to do work like, um, for example, earlier I did um, <clears throat> my little moon thing because it is a new moon today. Plus, it was an eclipse. Um, did you do, uh, and Matt, you can also answer this after Sonia, 
Uh, did you guys find time to do any kind of, you know, uh, magical uh, rituals or any kind of moon rituals today? I usually do. Yeah, yeah. Do you want? Do you want to go first, Matt? You can I go first, Matt. If you want. But I, I just honestly burned some incense and played some music and did a little meditation. Not too much, but it was lovely. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, although we couldn't see the eclipse here in the UK, well, uh, they said that parts of the UK may may have seen uh, something at sunset, but not the whole thing. But I don't think anybody did because we had cloud cover. Mm -hmm. um, but I certainly could feel it. I felt the eclipse, although it, I couldn't see it. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I think really for me, I tune in to the feeling of these things and the same with the moon. But I do, um, you know, I do, it depends on what work I'm doing because, of course, the phases of the moon um, are there for different workings that you wouldn't do a working that you would do on the new moon as you would on the dark moon, for instance. So, mm -hmm. um I tune in my work to the, the moon's phases quite often. Um, but I always do do a little honour to the um, to the full moon as well um, because uh, I, I think that that's uh, a very special time and it's always been a, a big thing <clears throat> in witchcraft. Uh, there's always been an association with... Uh, uh, it is called an S pact where you um, honor the full moon and meet as witches. And um, I don't know, um, Steph, do you, uh, are you a solitary or are you in a coven? Um, I would say I'm more solitary. Um, my teacher is in Australia and she does have regular meets. So that technically is a coven. But um, I'm more solitary because I'm surrounded by Christians everywhere you go. Yeah. Uh, Matt, how about you? Are you more solitary or are you actually in a coven? Um, yeah, more uh, solitary physical-wise. I do some stuff online, but uh, not in person, really. Yeah, it, it's now that yeah. the coming age of all this technology and stuff, it's much easier to be a part of a coven, even if it's only online. Um, and like I said, my my teacher is in Australia, and when she did, uh, she was supposed to have a, a a new moon ritual today. Unfortunately, because of our show, I couldn't join her. Um, but she said, whenever I can, um, I'm more than welcome. And, and she likes to do, you know, guided meditations. And then we talk about that and we talk about the goddess moon and stuff. Um, so, and it wasn't, I mean, I've known her for about a year, year and a half now. So, uh, I would say I'm pretty much more solitary, but Sonia, are you solitary or do you actually belong to a coven? I don't belong to a coven anymore in the sense that I did when I was in, in Alexandrian coven, but um, I do have other magicians I work with and witches that I work with, but I do a lot of uh, solitary work as well. So it's a bit of both, really. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Nothing so, so not, but, but not a coven as Wiccans have where, um, you know, when I was in the Alexandrian coven, we had a, you know, it was the usual 13. Um, and if there were other people who wanted to, to join, sometimes people would get to the third degree, which I did, and then you hive off. So once you become a, a high priestess in Wicca, you hive off, mm -hmm. which is just you go away and you make a, a, a coven for yourself. Yeah. Um, but, um, <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, so I don't have a, a coven as such like that anymore. Cause that's, that's how, how Wiccans work. They still work like that in the, um, in the UK. I'm not sure about how the covens work in America, but, uh, I think it's probably similar, isn't it? Um, we don't hive off though. Yeah. If you become a priestess, I mean, 
everyone can be a priestess and I guess they just take turns, uh, you know, being a priestess for that week or whatever, but I've never heard of anyone saying, okay, well, you're a priestess now. Now you have to go find your own coven. Um, so that could be a little variation difference, but yeah, it's pretty much all the same. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's called hiving because, um, it's it's connected with bees in that sense that um you know the queen bee flies away so the high priestess flies away and she mm. does another she she makes another coven um you see so that that's how it works in the uk um but i don't i'm not part of that anymore so uh, I, I work mainly with, you know, other witches and magicians if, if I'm working with someone else. Um, would you say that uh, Wiccan or paganism, would you say it's more uh, welcomed in uh, the UK more than it would say here where we're surrounded by a bunch of Christians? I think, Matt, you can attest to that. Is there a bunch of Christians around you? And yeah, I've had, I mean, I've had people like, well, why don't you just want to be with Jesus? And I'm like, uh, because I like wick, I like magic. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and I always felt at home with Wicca. I never felt at home at church. Um, but give us a little background about, you know, how did you start? Did you start a Christian? What, what, uh, made you fall in love with magic and, uh, do you find it that it's more acceptable in England than you would say in America? Um, I think because we're much, much smaller as these islands than, than USA, um, <laughs> I think uh, that this has become very much more acceptable that people have different religions or different uh, paths that they follow. So there's still going to, there's still a few sticklers that, um, you know don't don't like uh, witchcraft but um in general i'd say that uh, it, you know it's pretty open here to um, paganism and witchcraft and we do have uh, there are you know, many great big pagan festivals all around britain all the time so um <clears throat> i don't i don't think it's too bad uh here anymore like i say there are a few sticklers but i don't but not many i think uh, it's very much accepted i think sometimes they think that we're a bit crazy and eccentric but that's all right i'm also <laughs> uh, i'm also a druid um as well Ooh. and druid is uh, very accepted here druids are very accepted here. yeah I, I mean i'm part celtic and well i'm I have half German and half Swiss in my family and a little Irish in the German. And um, that's why I'm a Celtic Wiccan because um, I would love to go back to, I, I, not back to Ireland, like I've been there before, um, but I would love to go to Ireland and I would love to take offerings to the little uh, mounds of trees that are the Fae. Um, I would just like to take offerings there and thank them for coming into my life and helping me with certain things um protection sometimes wealth and um the big thing with my love interest <laughs> so um but uh would you say that uh something drew you to the magic path that you're on or was it more just like an interest like i have always been fascinated by magic fake magic or magician magic and then the real magic of course yeah, well, I suppose really, and I, I was born into a family um, of witches, and uh, my grandmother was a professional tarot reader as well. So um, it was part of my upbringing, but also um, I suppose I was a bit of a strange child as well because I can remember I was five years old and I was digging in the garden because I've always loved gardening. I mean, messing around in the soil so I was digging away with my little spade and I came across a piece of chandelier glass that had obviously broken off many years ago and I found it and I picked it up and I washed it off and I held it up to the sky 
and I could see all these prisms of light. And I went back into my mum and I said, I can see now and know that there are other dimensions. And I was five years old then. So I suppose it's always been with me. And uh, magic came naturally to me. I was born into a family of um, people who were into doing magic and uh, very close to the land and the folklore of the land of where we live. My family have lived um, in this area for 500 years, so we're oh, very close cow. to the land. <laughs> wow, <laughs> holy smokes. Um, I mean, we traced our uh, one lineage, the German side, we traced it back to the 1400s in Germany. Um, wow, that's that's amazing. Holy crap. <laughs> um, yeah, wow. So um, getting back to the paranormal, because I'm so interested that you're in England and you were talking about, you know, uh, seeing apparitions and stuff. And, and I've always wanted to ghost hunt in England, um, especially with my EVPs, because I was all into like the ghost adventures. And I used to watch uh, uh, Most Haunted, which was a UK group that uh, would actually go to haunted places and stuff. Um, even if they were faked, I still, you know, am very intrigued and have always been. Um, so the first time you said you were 12 when you saw an apparition um, and you said you could see through him. Is there any apparition you saw that actually looked like a, a real person? Uh, yeah, I can tell you about um, this is another little story that happened to me. Uh, it was here in Avebury, and it was when my son was little, and he was in the pushchair. And I was walking through the churchyard. It was in the day. It wasn't at night. Um, and you walk through the churchyard to go to the little shop. We're, we're a very small village here, although the, the stone circle's enormous, but the, the actual amount of people here are not very many. So anyway, I was walking through the churchyard to go to the shop and it's got a very pretty Norman church and very lovely graveyard, very old, pretty graveyard. And um, it's got some very old tombs in it, stone, big stone tombs. You know the ones I mean. Um, uh, they, they come up from the ground and they're like uh, big stone boxes um, and they've got the, you know, they're, they're Victorian. And um, anyway, I was just walking through and um, I saw this little boy and he was um, hopping on and off of one of the tombs and he uh, had um, like little white uh, stockings and little brown trousers that came down to his knees and a little hat and such like and I thought oh because the, the uh, Avery Manor is nearby and they used to have um, enactments and plays and things in there and I thought the naughty little fella is run away from the manor uh, <laughs> where he's supposed to be doing a play or something and he's playing out here on the grave in the graveyard and I thought, well, he's, he doesn't look very old. I wonder if he's all right. So, because um, he was he was really enjoying himself, jumping up and down on this tomb. Mm. So I went towards him thinking I was going to ask him if he was okay and did he ought to go back to where his mum and dad was. And he disappeared. And then air. Oh, you're so lucky. <laughs> Um, I so he looked like a living little boy, yeah, yeah. Oh man, and and the way he was dressed, I really thought he was dressed up for for a play in the manor, you know, because they do they did a, at that time, not now, but at that time they did a lot of um plays and enactments and stuff, and uh, sometimes there were children dressed up in Victorian clothes and stuff, and that's what I thought he was real, you see, because I thought he was um. He was stressed for that, but he wasn't because he was obviously an apparition. 
I, yeah, I wish I could see them. However, I just seem to hear them, like I was saying. Um, I, I've had several experiences, um, not only around this area, but also uh, my mother and I used to live in a one bedroom apartment and it was uh, a second floor apartment. And I was 16 years old and she would leave me because she worked night work. So she would leave me, but all the doors and the windows were locked. And it seems fittingly that I have lived near either a funeral home, a graveyard, or some kind of, <laughs> um, you know, a place where, you know, people, dead people <laughs> will roam. Um, it, in fact, there's like, there's a graveyard, like a few yards from where I live now. Um, it's crazy. But we used to <laughs> live... Uh, across the street from a graveyard and one door down on the same side as a funeral home. So I got both sides going for me here at this point. Um, and I remember I was at home and um, I was 16, just standing in the doorway. I had a cup in my hand. I was going to go get, uh, you know, a drink or something. And I remember like not, none of the, of the other lights were on. It just my bedroom light and I was watching TV waiting for a commercial because I was going to go get another drink. And I heard this click and I'm like, I look in the bat or the kitchen lights on and I'm like, well, everything was off. <laughs> What's going on? So I, it took me literally two seconds to walk from my bedroom doorway to the kitchen. And we had one of those old, like, you know, push, uh, light switches. Um, I looked around, nothing. I looked all around, everything was locked. And if, honestly, if this was not an uh, apparition or a ghost or anything, um, this person needs to be in Vegas making money because if you can get out of the second floor of your apartment with all the doors and windows locked in two seconds, you need to be making money. <laughs> so I, yeah, I would like see things that would happen, but I like, and I can also hear them sometimes. I can hear the spirits. Um, I'm working on seeing, um, I'm working on it, <laughs> uh, but, uh, Matt, have you had any paranormal experiences in your life? Oh yeah. There's a fairly famous for here, um, place in Marietta that was a, a mill of some sort. I think it was a paper mill and, um, a three letter organization has it blocked off at night now. But <laughs> when I was younger, you could go there and they have all the lights off. And uh, my brother's girlfriend at the time said that she saw something. So me and my brother and um, her and her girlfriend all went. And um, I thought, oh, we're not going to see anything. But I was open-minded to it. Um, and nothing happened for a while. And then all of a sudden, just about dawn, uh, dawn, uh, just about uh, the sun going down, I saw a lady in blue. And she waved at me and then jumped down. And I just saw... A rush of energy i guess you would say and i don't know if anyone else saw it but we all looked at each other and ran to my car and took off and then i would go there every halloween and leave offerings for her because uh, she supposedly got murdered so yeah uh, oh. unfortunately that tends to be uh, a thing with hauntings is um you know they usually a bad death can do yeah. something with that yeah like the stone tape theory <clears throat> Yeah, um, I also, and this is crazy because I was just talking to my soulmate about this. Um, I live about an hour and uh, about an hour, hour and a half, maybe 25 minutes from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Um, and uh, Sonia, I'm sure you know world history, uh, but here in America, especially Pennsylvania, uh, Gettysburg is one of the bloodiest battles of the civil war. Um, mm -hmm. and I mean, I know more history than you could possibly know because I mean, it's Gettysburg. If you lived about, you know, an hour from a big battle, say in England, I'm sure you'd want to know the ins and outs of it. But mostly, um, I was talking about, um, why I got interested in ghosts in the first place. And it's because my parents back in the 80s and 90s would watch Unsolved Mysteries. And one of the very first ghost stories I ever heard of was the ghost of Gettysburg. And it was, uh, you know, this re these reenactors who I would literally 
see ghosts because they are reenactors. They have to be there. They have to reenact those battles, right? Um, and it, it was like a, some reenactors had been sitting there, and it was after one of their reenactments, they were resting, and a guy came up to them, very ragged beard and, and a hat, and said, you know, tough day, boys. And, and they go, yeah, tough day. And he handed them um, a bullet pack. Um, so like real ammunition. And the guy pulled up the bullet and said, this is what he handed to me. And it was a real live 1863 bullet from the Civil War. And live ammunition is not allowed at Gettysburg at all. And it hasn't been since 1863. Um, <clears throat> so it really freaked these guys out because, I mean, they were reenactors not expecting to see a, a live guy come up to you. And, and um, I was at Gettysburg like one time. I would love to go there with my soulmate and ghost hunt. But um, uh, you have to get like special permission to get out on the battlefield. And the part I want to go to, because um, he's from Minnesota and there is a... Um, a story about the Minnesota first at Gettysburg. Um, I know it like the back of my hand, but if I would go to that area um, and ghost hunt, I could talk to some of those guys and kind of get, you know, their perspective of how they felt. Um, uh, the story real quick is that um, the Minnesota first were kind of sacrificed um, so they could buy more time so that general uh, Hancock could uh, reinforce and Meade, of course, would reinforce um, so that they wouldn't break this fish hook that they had done up on the hills of Gettysburg. And um, these guys knew, uh, you know, what, you know, take those colors means. It means injury, really bad injury. Uh, even uh, the Civil War hospitals <sighs> were like... <laughs> Because they would literally, you know, saw your leg off and that's where the old saw bones came from. Um, so it, it meant either amputation or death on the battlefield. And these guys, I don't, I, my, I myself couldn't do this. I mean, I guess I could if I was a guy in this war um, from the Minnesota first. But um, they have at least three monuments I'd love to see. But, um, but I, it, it's just... Uh, my life has always been, like I said, I've either lived near a, a, a graveyard or a funeral home. Um, it's crazy. It's really crazy how that, that all came together. But um, they say around here, um, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, um, that uh, this was all Indian reservation or Indian land, Native American land, and uh, that it was. A, a burial ground. And when I lived over about, I mean, like a few yards away, I mean, we didn't move very far. Um, but the, my dad's old house, uh, literally I was asleep or just about asleep and my TV goes on like that. And I'm like, but I just turned it off. And, and it wasn't the, the remote wasn't even near me. It, I was just like confused at first, but they were never like, I never felt like evil spirits. They were just kind of like mischievous. <laughs> um, Sonia, have you ever run into like a malevolent spirit or, or um, apparition? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this uh, happened, actually happened to me because um, my then um mother-in-law and father-in-law lived in a very old coaching inn um obviously it wasn't anymore a coaching inn it was their house um it was built in i think it was 1753 holy cow so uh and it was built right next to um the one stike and the one stike is uh a huge kind of um, road or embankment that the Romans built. I expect you know that. Um, and of course, there are many stories around that as well, because, um, you know, many people traversed the one strike back then, 
when the Romans occupied Britain. Mm. But anyway, that's where it was built, right next to there as well. So um, anyway, um, one day um, my then mother-in-law says to me, I don't, I don't feel right here. There's, there's something really wrong here and I want you to come. Because I, I just I just don't feel that there's, there's something really wrong here. And I thought, well, what does she mean, something really wrong here? <clears throat> Didn't have any idea of that. So uh, anyway, I, I said, well, when when do you feel like this? Do you feel like this at any type of, a certain type of time? Is it night? Is it day? When is it? And she said, it's when the sun starts to set. So um, I went there just before sunset one day and she said it starts by something happening on the walls of the kitchen. So um, I went into the kitchen and the sun had not set yet. So I stood there and she said it's that wall there. And then when it starts, it starts there. And then something else happens after that. So I waited and the sun started to set and the shadows started to come in through the windows uh, of this very old house. And um, I looked at the wall that she said, I was keeping an eye on it and it was very strange because um, as the sun went down, uh, it was uh, like it was almost like a television screen appeared on the wall, and it had like lots of wavy lines on it, and um, they were moving. And <laughs> she said, "It's begun. This is this is how it always begins with uh, with this happening on the wall." <clears throat> and I thought, well, yeah, okay, it's very strange, but it's not that scary. And um, she said, well, because, I mean, it, it scared her because she, A, she knew what came after it. And um, B, for her, it was very scary to see something that strange on the kitchen wall that was not there before. So uh, anyway, I... Um, I watched it and she said it, it will it will disappear in a minute and sure enough it did and um she said uh, can you feel anything and um, i could it was like um you know when a cold a, a cold draft goes on your skin it was like that and um, i could feel the goosebumps uh, rising on on my skin and she said, I can't go in there, but in the passageway that leads to upstairs. Um, she said, I can't go in there. I'm, I'm too scared now that I know this is happening. Um, she said, w will you go in there and have a look? Because she said, I, I, I wonder if it, you know, sometimes I wonder if I'm mad because this is so crazy what happens. And I said, OK. I'll go in there. So um, I walked in and the passage was very dark because in these old houses, um, sometimes there's not a lot of light because the windows are small in the, in the old houses in England. So um, I went into the passageway that led to the stairs to go up to the bedrooms. And as soon as I stepped in the passageway, it was like a huge gust of wind. And I mean a huge gust of wind. And yet there was no windows open and there was no door to be open in that passageway. And, and it blew very fiercely. And then suddenly something got me by the throat like this and pushed me against the wall. And it really was terrifying because uh, I couldn't see anything. All I knew was that had happened to me. 
and um, anyway, I decided, right, <laughs> I'm coming out of this passageway because this is not good. So um, I came out of there and uh, I, told, I, I said to her, well, tell me what happens to you because I wasn't going to tell her what happened to me because I wanted to know if, she, if it was the same thing. And she told me and she said, I don't want to go in the passageway when after I see that on the kitchen wall. And she said, it doesn't happen every night when the sun goes down, but sometimes it does. And then I don't want to go in the passageway and I don't want to go upstairs either. So um, anyway, uh, I decided and she said, what can I do? And I said, well, basically, um, you need the house cleansed. Mm -hmm. But I had this feeling that uh, there was something very malefic there. You said so, this was um, stage in, that's what it was called? Sorry? You said it was a stage in? It was a, a, an old coaching in, as it was called. It was where people, uh, would, uh, you know, rest um, and rest like their a, horses. Like a bed uh, and breakfast uh, almost. But it was more for like travelers that would pass by. Yeah, that's right. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. But it was run by, uh, it would have been run by like a, a, a couple of people, you know, a couple, a man and woman probably. A um, bit like a pub or, or um, you know, a hotel, a small hotel or motel probably in the US. Um, so, um, yes, that's how it would have been. And that's that's exactly what it was. So anyway, I decided before I did anything, I would look up the history of the place. And I found out that it was, when it was built and it was an old coaching inn because it was on the... Um, the old A4, which was a direct uh, road that leads from Bath to London. Um, so it was a place where many people would have stopped. And um, anyway, I looked up the history of it and it, it had a very, um, a very strange history because um, quite a few people that stopped there went missing. And... Um, when I uh, when I looked at, into the research that I could do, and unfortunately there wasn't an awful lot uh, about it, but it, there, it was some some of its history about, and especially about the people that went missing. But it was a known fact actually that um, if you had a person that owned a place like that quite often what they would do is when people stopped there and they had money on them, they would murder them in the night and take the money. Yeah, they would uh, rob them. Yeah, I've heard of many pubs over there that are many inns um, that, uh, especially coaching inns uh, such as that, um, were ripe with uh, highwaymen, I think they called them. Yeah, um, we had highwaymen here. Uh, yeah. We had naked <laughs> highwaymen here. I can tell you the story of the naked highwaymen if you want. But um, <laughs> uh, no, um, you know, uh, yes. But going back to this story about uh, about this particular coaching, and I found out that so obviously some pretty awful deeds were done there, and it must have been known at some time by somebody that um, you know murdered people, took their money, robbed their money. And, um, you know, they, they probably just buried the bodies around there somewhere, I, I guess, because they would have had to got rid of them. Of course, nobody knew. And I mean, in those days, of course, you didn't have um, much uh, communication like we have today. So um, if somebody was traveling from Bath to London and they went missing, nobody would know whereabouts they went missing, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, this 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 whatever it was and whether it was you know the, the person that actually did the murders there this entity um it was a very powerful entity and it was one that um i couldn't get rid of it 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 didn't go and um anyway they moved and nobody wanted to be in that place and it's actually been pulled down now 
So they actually bulldozed it and yeah. just yeah. kind of yeah. said the heck with it. <laughs> um, yeah, it doesn't exist anymore, yeah. Do you think that the spirits are still there haunting the land, or do you think they've just moved on to wherever they needed to go? I don't know. I really don't know about that. Um, I haven't got a clue. All I know is that at that time, it was definitely in, in that house still. Yeah, you know, I um, have heard all kinds of interesting stories about um, what they would call almost shanghaiing someone uh, in those old pubs. Like they would have like a trap door and, you know, they would literally, you know, trap guys in there. It's crazy, these stories. And then that's how they got, you know, sailors for, you know, vessels and stuff. So it's really crazy what they would do. Um and, and like you said, there was no missing persons back in the, you know, way back. Um, I mean, mail wasn't even reliable at that point, uh, it, even though people wrote letters. Um, wow, that's really, I mean, it's a really cool story. I'm sorry that happened to you. I mean, I wouldn't want anyone to uh, get hurt. Um, but I just find that completely fascinating. I'd love to you know, take my recorder down there and, and in that passageway, if it was still around, um, <clears throat> and just like, see if that entity would do something to me, though. I don't think I'm as brave as Zach Bagans who likes to, you know, provoke them. You know what I'm talking about, Matt, right? You've seen ghost adventures. You know, uh, I'm not sure. Adventures? I might have, but I don't remember. <laughs> like Zach would go, come on, you ghost, come at me. And I'm like, I don't know if I could do that, but I'd be like, you want to talk? <laughs> talk. Um, so I don't think that would have been something to have messed with. It, it, no. was, it was an extremely powerful, yes, negative it energy. Really was, yes, it, it really <clears throat> was. And, um, it's very difficult to describe. It's not, it's not just that it actually physically, um, got hold of me, but it was the very power of the feeling of the thing. It was, it was very. Well, like you felt like you were being, you know. Well, yeah. Held. That that well, yeah, that wasn't pleasant in itself. But but the worst part was is is the the the, the menace of it, the feeling of it. Oof. If you wanted to call it truly evil, then you, you probably could name it that. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> I've only seen certain things and then, you know, I've heard things, but, um, and I have EVPs of things, but it's always been, you know, nice and stuff. Um, <clears throat> I, I, uh, like I said, I, when I went to Gettysburg, I, I didn't feel malice or evil there. I just kind of felt like sorrow and like someone was going to stand up and point, point at me. You know, like one of those old muskets that they had and stuff. Uh, I I just could see visions in my head as we were driving into Gettysburg of like a soldier standing up and pointing, and that's it. Nothing, like I said, I didn't see anything, or that's the only feelings I got. And then, of course, you know, you get the the goosebumps and the hair on the back of the neck stands up, and kind of like you, Sonia. I was just like, oh gosh, <laughs> I was like, that's not. What am I, why am I seeing this? Um, so if we could kind of turn, um, would you say, Sonia, that you are psychic, that you can see these things? And have you worked with psychics? Um, have you done any psychic work with like maybe the police or anything? Um, what, how would you describe yourself psychically? Uh, yeah, I guess I am. Psychic, if you want to call it that, yes, I do. I've always seen things, picked up things. Um, I can make contact with spirits and spirit beings, so I guess you would say that I was psychic, yeah. Um, and uh, you know, as far as um, in this house, uh, I'm so used to the spirits, the spirits in this house, um, you know, all the time, and it's not surprising because it's actually on the avenue of the stone circle. So um, there are, 
definitely things in this house things move about and doors open and shut and you know it's a bit like um I remember Michael Howard telling me um about Madeline uh, Montalban's uh, house and he she he stayed there overnight uh, she was the witch of St Giles by the way I don't know if you know about her mm. and um he said that uh, he he was staying there the night she let him stay in the spare room um because he's, he'd gone to London to visit her and uh, he said there was just spirit stuff going on all night long and the next day he said couldn't get any sleep because there was doors banging and footsteps and stuff going on <laughs> and of course he said um he told Madeline the next day she said oh yeah well that's you know he said I never bothered to ban banish the spirits if I call them or anything she said they just seem to stay around and I and I find the same really I think I do because I do a lot of magical work as well and yeah. the, the house has new spirits in uh here and sometimes you know Things like um, you can hear the pots and pans in the kitchen moving and stuff like that. But I don't take any notice. I, right. I kind of half wake up and think, oh, yeah, it's just them, isn't it? And that, um, Yeah, that sleep. happened to me in that apartment where um, I would be sitting there typing on the computer to whoever I was seeing at the time. And I would hear clang, clang, clang because we would leave dishes in the dish or in the sink because uh, my mom had a dishwasher. But I mean, it was like a portable one. Um, but sometimes we would just would be lazy and we would just leave stuff in the sink and I would hear the clang, clang, clang while I was typing. And I know it wasn't me typing the sound of me typing. So when I would stop, it would stop. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm just going to ignore this. But would you say the spirits in your house are, um, benevolent? Yeah, I mean they're they're just around, and I think some some of it is um some of them are like little sort of mischief spirits and stuff like that where I've done working. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, and I mean, what do you feel about uh, the Ouija board there? Oh, I have two of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, have... so how, how would you feel that maybe when the when the winter comes, why why don't we do a séance and um. I would love to do that. Oh my gosh. Yes. I would so love to do that. Um, yeah. Um, because, um, well, the thing is, and everyone has seen the movie, the exorcist, which was supposed to be, Oh, she started with an Ouija board and that's how she got possessed. First of all, I never believed that because when I was, Oh gosh, I was at least 13. My mom, who is very, very Christian went and got me an Ouija board at my request and then spent the rest of my life telling me how evil the Ouija board is. Um, but I, I was surprised because I didn't think that she would do it because, you know, oh, no, that's evil, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, yeah, and I've had that Ouija board for years and I've used it and some of it's some of it's come true and then some of it didn't. So I think it's like a you know, drop of a hand, but I saw one and you're going to laugh, but I love vampire kind of things, vampire movies, music. Um, I, I swear if vampires were real, I would be one because <laughs> I would love it. Um, I have, I, I write little short stories and one of them is, well, two of them. Um, I'm a vampire that's lived very many years. So I base it off of like me myself. Um, but my characters would like act like, you know, vampires who lived for however many years and um, they meet their soulmate and they can't, you know, hypnotize them or whatever. But I just, I love vampire stuff. Well, anyway, on Amazon, I saw this vampire Ouija board and I was like, oh, I'm getting that. <laughs> so, and they're both under my bed. And I can honestly say I've never had anything happen that was malevolent because. I first of all, I would know how to protect myself because I know how to do that circle of protection. Um, or when I was Christian, uh, back in the when I was you know young and stupid, uh, <laughs> um, I would actually pray over the board for protection. So 
Um, but now I would just do like a circle of protection and have, um, I call to Hecate. Uh, she's the main goddess that I will call to. Um, I have her key right here. So key. I don't want to joke myself, but yeah, I carry her key around. Um, I also have this ring with like a, a time wheel. I don't know if you can see that. But I got this off of Amazon. So, um, and like I said, I, uh, I, I like to, um, usually I will take sage incense and just kind of, you know, um, put my own energy into it. So uh, that's what I did with my key and my ring. But um, when it comes to Ouija boards, I have always felt comfortable around them. Like I never felt any evil. But then, like I said, I knew how to protect myself. How about you, Matt? What do you think about Ouija boards? Oh, boy. I've got a story. <laughs> um, oh, no. Here we go. All right. So I'm me ready. and my two friends tried to do it. And my other two friends didn't believe it all. They're like, this is bull. It's not going to work. But it sort of worked. And it kept That's going to the number four. Indeed, I'm sure. It kept going to the number four. So I got the idea. I'm like let's have your brother come here and see if it works with four people because it just was barely going to four. And so they said, okay, fine. My brother used to play with the Ouija board and he swears that it works. So that got me more excited. I'm like, okay, it does work. It does work. Cause now somebody else believes in it too. So I'm like, cool. So as soon as we had four people, it started taking off and I'm like, okay, this is awesome. And I was probably too into it to be honest, but, um, they started getting interesting because or interested because they would tell us things and nothing big no, nothing that big but um uh i made the mistake of not being respectful and that's when stuff literally for about a year started flying off the shelves lights turning on and off um we both got vehemently sick eating uh four by four from in and out which is four patties of a hamburger um i went to the restroom and they were just sitting by the ouija board and a spider ran on the number four and then they saw me come in and break my neck and so when i came in the room again they looked at me like really strange and i was like um hi how's it going i've just been gone for you know a minute or something and then they told me what happened and i'm like oh crap so um here i am you know your doppelganger. I was oh 19 gosh. years old. I was 19 and, you know, you were wore 19. all black. Wore all black and listened to heavy metal. And here I am sleeping with the light on. I kid you not. I was <laughs> terrified. And, yeah, so um, Sonia and I were talking about this the other day. It's <laughs> so good not to be commanding of a spirit, but to enter it like a friendship. And, right. you know, right. people think you, you bring an offering, like they're thinking a goat or something. But... You can just burn incense, of course, or an apple or water or something. But yeah, you treat them like you would a guest that you have to your house. But when I was 19, I was foolish. I didn't know anyone else that did magic. And so I was disrespectful. And that started a whole chain of events that was really interesting. And then I come to find out that the lady that had lived at the house before had manic depression. And she was laughing in the house one day when her husband was gone and the house burned down. And she died laughing inside. So we think maybe that had something to do with it. Um, what's also weird is the people that built our house, their last name was Troll. And then one of the workers that worked at our house, his last name was Lord. And he died a week after building our house, really violently fell off a roof and landed on a nail. And so some really weird stuff happened. And that was before I did the Ouija board. But um, I started finding all this out and I'm like, Okay, it's starting to add up, and <laughs> I'm respectful now. I apologize. I will not do that again, <laughs> and it's definitely real. <laughs> oh, jeez. You rebel, oh. you. <laughs> oh, my yeah, yeah. I'm a bit foolish in my youth, for sure. But. Yeah, that's what I was always told, that um, you don't demand people to come. You just request it, right? <laughs> oh, jeez. Some people have to learn the hard way. <laughs> Oops. And, and that's um, and it's the same with deities. So um, I call to Hecate. I call to Kali. I also call to Isis and Osiris. 
Um, I, I found another one, but I don't remember how to pronounce his name. He's a, a water spirit and he gives like he will give or teach psychic ability. I found him in my, it's like a thousand spirit book. I don't, don't remember where it is. I think it's in my son's room, but, <laughs> but um, Simbi, I think it says Simbi. I think I don't, it's African. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just pronounce it how I think it goes, but yeah, he's a water spirit and he's supposed to help with, um, you know, a psychic ability and stuff. And I was trying to help him with my, my sight. Cause I want to do what son what Sonia does and see spirits with my physical eyes. Um, and, and there's a, another reason for that. Um, but, um, I also, uh, the thing is, uh, Kali and I, Matt and I were talking about this in the first episode is very misunderstood and she's from the Indian culture. Um, and she was always placed as the bad one in like movies such as um one of my favorites indiana jones and the temple of doom um they prayed to her and they would make sacrifices to her um which is not i never felt any kind of that from her i never felt evil from her um and i've always been intrigued with kali so i think um having her come in and helping she she also helps with like illusions and stuff so um I wish she would stop my stupid cousin from being delusional, but you know, that's that. <laughs> um, but it, it's, um, it, it's something that I've learned that um, when you like, when you cast a circle, Matt in Wicca, you request the elements and you request the deities to come in and then you thank them and give them offerings. But, but mostly uh, Hecate, I would say I have so many statues and we were going to do statues after, after this episode. Um, and uh, I have sta many statues of Hecate because I would consider her like my mother because uh, Sonia, I know you don't know this, but my mother wasn't so nice. I'll put it that way. She just wasn't very nice to me uh, most of my life. And um, I've done some shadow work with my soulmate. Um, and I, I, I started talking to her. I haven't gotten to the, I love you part yet, but at least we're building that bridge of forgiveness and I'm at least starting to talk to her now. So <laughs> we've gotten that far. <laughs> um, because before I was just like, I just cut her out of my life. I didn't want her. I didn't want to even talk to her. Um, she could be in my son's life, but, but not in mine for what happened. So, uh, I've done a lot of growing up in the past couple of weeks, but, um, Sonia, tell us about your book. Is it about spirituality or is it more like a, um, a fairy tale or fiction? Uh, what book are you talking about? My recent? Book. Any of them. <laughs> recent, any of them. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So I've done books on the paranormal, which are basically true ghost stories that I've woven into these stories as well to make them more interesting. Um, I've also done a book uh, under another name uh, called uh, Powerful Witchcraft Spells. Um, and um, this uh, that we're talking about now, the most recent is, it is a, a Raven Lenormand uh, guidebook and I designed the cards as well. So this is the ancient um, Lenormand uh, spread and the way that uh, the cards are used. Um, but I've done, done it in my own way um, with my connection with the Morrigan and um, Morgan of Fay. So um, that connection, that stream came about and I designed the images and um, I had uh, the cards uh, and also the images of the cards are in the book. Uh, and um, I do have it here. I don't know if you can see it. It's probably got, it's, it's backwards, I expect, because we've got, we haven't got the. Um, and when can, uh, where can we find these? Uh, yeah, it's on Lulu. I've, I've actually, I've given Matt the, the links for you. 
Okay. Um, and um, they will the be in the description field. So for all the people who will see this, uh, links will be in the description field because I'm interested. I, I want to buy some books. <laughs> yeah, well, well, they're, they're, they're very similar to the tarot in some ways, but, but actually they're easier to use. Now, the guidebook I just showed you is a very, um, you know, complete manual <clears throat> of how to use the cards. And it tells you about each individual card and how they relate to other cards. I also gave... Um, descriptions of spreads you can use and they are amazing they are such um easy cards to use they're very simple in a lot of ways but they're very deep um and uh you know i i love them anyway and i and i think that um they they do hold the magic of the morrigan and morgan le fay so they're very kind of fairy as well um as you can see and you uh, designed these or illustrated them? Yeah, I designed them. these. Yeah, I designed them. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I love that. I wish I could draw, but you're so much better. <laughs> um, so, wow. so they're, they're all images that I did. And the backs of the cards, of course, have um, all got ravens on ravens yeah of course the corvids are related to the morrigan and morgan the fay so um that's the, that's the sort of current that you get on to do your divination with these cards um but um you know the the guidebook explains everything that's and, so funny because um, i literally just did a class with my teacher on how to read tarot and of course we use the old uh writer deck um but that's so awesome like i and i i just bought um a witch's oracle set <laughs> i don't know where it is but um that's i would like yeah i would definitely like those especially if they're easy to use and i mean um sonia do you give uh tarot readings or is it more tarot coaching yes i i've taught people uh to do tarot um and of course now then all man um i also do private readings for those who want them how about do you do any classes in like um psychic sight hearing sensing knowing well um yeah there's there's going to be some new stuff coming up soon because i'm just gonna get a new website up together with a friend of mine and um we're going to be offering a lot of uh stuff uh, if people are interested in different courses, like psychic mediums, I, I, yeah. I'm, I've been looking for someone, and I will pay <laughs> if I have to. But I, I, I just wanted someone to kind of help me with my, my sight because I've been trying to to see, and um, yeah, it's better when I'm like laying down and just about to sleep. Then I see everything. Like I'm just like, shoo, 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 shoo. and I'm just like, why am I thinking that? Um, or why is that coming to me? Um, I've had very vivid dreams all of my life, stuff I couldn't explain. Um, I've had dreams half come true, all come true. Uh, and I don't dream in black and white. I dream in color. Um, it's crazy how I'm just like, it's like literally sometimes uh, my mind will have like a movie screen. It's just about before I'm about, wait, about to wake up. Like I'll see this like little movie screen in my head and then like, it'll be like a movie, like will go off in my head. And I want to bring that into the here and now. And, and also, of course, I want to see spirits. Um, <laughs> and again, there's a, a big reason why Matt knows, but um, I, I can hear them, um, even the living spirits, which there's one spirit I wish I didn't hear um but i digress <laughs> but yeah if you um i mean you will have me i will sign up your psychic classes i will do it i i, I raise my hand and yes i oh computer don't fall <laughs> um i would love to do a seance with all of you that would be freaking awesome um well we could use many different methods with the seance as well because um 
we we have done some online seances before. I think you were there, weren't you, Matt? I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I like to use the Consari cards, and sometimes I, I use those. Um, sometimes I use the Ouija board. Sometimes I use just a pendulum. Um, all of oh, them. I don't even know where my pendulum Work is. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we, we've we had some fun doing that, haven't we, Matt? No, absolutely. With Michael. It's always uh, very interesting and productive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how much do you charge, Sonia, for psychic, uh, not psychic readings, but, but readings? I don't know. I haven't worked it out yet. Once the website's up, I'll let you have the link and you can have a look. And then you'll see what's on offer and we're going to have lots of different things um, because uh, Michael's going to be doing some stuff. I'm going to be doing some stuff. There's going to be all sorts of stuff on there. Very interesting. So um, you'll have a choice and you can see what you want and what you want to do. Yeah, I would definitely sign up for the uh, the teacher because I, uh, I think that's what I need to get into now. Now that I know the magic part and you know, I have my magic teacher. I need to get into the psychic part because, again, <laughs> I want to uh, see spirits and, and talk to them. But, I mean, I do I do talk to them. I just, it's more hearing. Like, I hear their spiritual voice. Um, and I have, oh, come here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, Sonia. It's an EVP recorder. Every ghost hunter should have one. <laughs> um, I've caught voices on here that are relevant to why I need to see spirits. Matt, you know this. You have uh, you have a couple. Um, it, it's it kind of like when I first heard this voice, I was very, oh, my gosh, did I just hear what I thought I just hear, heard? Um, and it was crazy. But then I'm like, well, I'm not crazy. I heard it. You know, I heard it with my own ears. So, and then that's when I started to <clears throat> kind of do meditations and Hecate started sort of helping me with the hearing. Um, it, it, and I've done meditations like what she used to do with me. Um, and, and it was the same thing she would do. So like she would say, well, can you hear something? If you hear something pointed out, say, okay, yeah, that's that. Okay, that's that. Now, can you hear the quietest things? Yeah. Okay. I can hear that too. So I think, um, I'm very, uh, my psychic abilities extend to cognizance of knowing, uh, something I did. I did a reading for my friend one time and I said, why do you walk around and why do you pace? He goes, no one knows that I do that by myself. And he's like, how did you know that? I said, I felt the answer. I knew it, you know, it, it like came out of me. Um, I would like to channel because there's someone specifically I'd like to channel, but I don't know anybody else who likes to channel. <laughs> so I would like this person to channel, but I, this spirit, I would like to channel the spirit, but I would need someone to practice with. And unfortunately I don't have anyone to do that with. Um, uh, just before we wrap up, Sonia, you're you said you have a son. Yeah. Um, is he uh, into Wicca or paganism, or is he more? He just wanted to be Christian or be something else. No, he's he's uh, he's very interested in everything. He's very psychic, and always has been from child. So um, he's. Uh, He's 34 now, so. Oh, he's a little younger than I am. I'm 30. I'll be 38 on 420. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, he's, 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 very, he's, he's very into everything, really. Um, and like I say, he's just naturally very psychic. He always was. My son, I would he is, He's a Pisces. You know what Pisces are like. Oh, yeah, they're the fish. He's a dreamer. <laughs> He's a dreamer. He's such a fish, and he's got the emotions. So, so, uh, so, what sign are you, Steph? I am actually, and this is crazy. You're gonna laugh, Sonia. Um, uh, I'm right between Aries and Taurus. So I was born on the cusp of yeah. Aries and Taurus. Yeah. 
-hmm. My dad's birthday is today. He turned 69 today. So happy birthday, dad. Um, He's an Aries and my mom was born April 23rd, same year. So they were two weeks apart. Um, And she's in Taurus and I'm an Aries Taurus right in the middle. 420 is when I was born. So my dad's April 8th. My I'm uh, 420 and my mom is 423. So we're all and it, it literally I just really fell in the middle of them, though. I came later, of course, <laughs> I'm not turning 60 or anything. But um, yeah, my mom, my dad is 69 today. My mom will be 69 on April 23rd and I'll be 38 on 420. <laughs> so I came from an Aries and a Taurus and I am an Aries and a Taurus. I would say I'm more Taurus based. Um, because I'm very stable. I like that financial, uh, piece and, um, I'm very bullheaded when it comes to, you know, change though. I've, I've kind of gotten used to it, you know, um, over the years, um, change is not exactly easy for me, but it's a little bit easier. Uh, my soulmate is an Aries. (laughs) So my dad's an Aries, my mom's a Taurus. I'm an Aries Taurus, and my soulmate is an Aries. Oh, but he trust me, he sets my soul on fire. Okay. Uh, my son is the odd one out. He's a Scorpio. He was gonna be my Sawin baby, but he couldn't wait four more days. <laughs> he was born October 27th. And uh, uh I got a scorpion by the tail here. <laughs> I got a tiger by the tail. Um, he's super duper smart, but, um, unfortunately we thought he was going to be, uh, born in December, but he came 10, 27. So, uh, he just wanted to see his mom, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, what about your, you Matt? Uh, what are you, what sign are you? I'm a Sagittarius and my son's a Libra. Oh, <laughs> yep, and he's just, uh, what? Six days away from my brother. Who's a Scorpio. So. My brother is also a Scorpio. He's November 7th. Yep. <laughs> Two Scorpios and, and Aries and Taurus. And, and, and like everyone in my family, not everyone, but most of the people in my family, like my aunts is the 19th of April. You know, <laughs> everybody's in April. There's a lot of busy, busy stuff going on in April. So, um, but yeah, like, I think that's funny how it all comes together like that. Like, you know, uh, like I said, my dad's an Aries I, uh, and my mom's a Taurus. I'm an Aries Taurus and my soulmate's an Aries. Uh, but um, I wouldn't say he's a typical Aries. He's not very, he's not very pompous. Uh, he's not very, no, he's more down to earth and very, he, I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, he's an Aries. <laughs> Uh, Sonia, what about you? Yeah, well, the astrological chart is much more than just our sun sign. So what you're saying about your partner is uh, that you're picking up something else to do with where the planets are. I did, um, I did, I had a qualification from the um, astrological studies here in the UK. So I, I do um, various charts as well. And that's very... Uh, interesting because sometimes you know we're showing much more of our moon sign sometimes maybe within our sun or maybe it's our ascendant that shows up and uh yeah well i'm a leo anyway okay (laughs) my ex was a leo (laughs) (laughs) so uh, i'm just a little pussy cat really it's just a pussy yeah, Leos uh, can also be very, like Aries, they can be very, I mean, it's like, don't mess with the lion's tail, you know, because they can, uh, they'll eat you, you know. <laughs> well, <I bet laughs> I you yeah, so, I mean, I don't know about the moon sign, but uh, I do know that uh, the financial stuff, I'm very Taurus. Oriented. But you've got you've got red hair. That's very Aries. <laughs> well, actually, that yeah. Well, I've actually had every color. I did. So have you're black. a little bit both. I I picked up a lot of Taurus from you, actually. I yeah, I, I did, I'm very you, set I did in my feel ways. that. But um, 
there, there's still that spark, you know, that fire, isn't there? So here we are. There's, there's, we're all fire signs here, aren't we? Really? I mean, although you are cusp born, but uh, we've got no wow, well, we've set everything on fire, won't we? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> It's a good thing that you know. Oh, <laughs> well, and um, I, I, which is funny because my mom is very Taurusy, bullheaded, and stubborn. Well, my dad is stubborn. He say, "I'm not stubborn. <laughs> You're stubborn, Dad." Um, yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. Yeah, how that all works out. We could get together and do. Um, we could do an interesting talk on astrology, um, if you wanted to at some point. I've dabbled in it, um, and I've read, you know, like the, um, the the stuff like uh, my son. Um, he is nice to a fault, but then you know, watch out for that scorpion strike because. And same with the bull, you know, you mess with the bull, you get the horns, right? Uh, Aries, same thing. You mess with the, bull, you know, the ram head and <laughs> you get the horns. Um, mostly where you don't want it. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Pisces are the dreamers and the fish. So there's emotion in the water, you know. Um, I... I that's pretty much all I know. Cancer or Gemini is very much the twins and they can be definitely two faced. Uh, my ex stepfather, my ex stepfather was Gemini. He was very two faced. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to do that. Sonia, anything, like I said, it, it, um, I'd love to keep in touch with you, especially because, um, I, I really, I'm looking for a teacher to teach me like psychic medium stuff. Like I said, there's a reason there, Matt knows, but, um, yeah, I definitely am looking for one. And in fact, I was going to like every medium I've looked up is like $200. And I'm just like, I can't afford that. You know, I'm on a budget here. I'm a working mother, but you know, ah, uh, it's crazy. <laughs> And my son is only seven, so I mean, you know, I have a son in school. Yeah. So if there's any, like, um, you know, if we could just keep in touch, and yeah, we can definitely do astrology. I mean, I, I definitely want you back. Um, <laughs> no doubt about that. I've, I've, I've had so much fun. I didn't even realize it's been over an hour, and we've been talking. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to be here and to meet you i already know matt of course so <laughs> um yeah yes it's been it's been lovely and thank you for inviting me and we definitely will have you back and we'll talk about astrology i i need to read up more on there, it to be there's honest there's a myriad of things we could talk about if you want to just, just absolutely mm -hmm. and just um yeah let's keep in touch and and we definitely will. Um, so we are going to wrap up here. I hope everyone has enjoyed this episode with our special and wonderful guest, Sonia Smith. Um, and she will be back on definitely. Um, cause there's so many things I want to ask you. I just, you know, unfortunately we keep these to a minimum, but, um, but for everyone out there, I hope you've enjoyed it. Her links will be in the description, our links, Matt and mine and uh, my teacher, Matt's teacher, and, um, everybody's links will be in the description field. So just go ahead and hit those links below. If you're interested in Sonia's work, you are more than welcome to, to get her links in that description field and blessed be everybody. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>